What's up guys, Thomas Alex Norman here. Yeah. Quick introduction, sustainability. Why should you even be interested in it? Uh, and what is it? Basically, if we're really honest with ourselves, the world is in a bit of a shitty state um, in so many different ways, but the way that I'm gonna focus on is, is basically our relationship with nature. And if you just look at a map, um, you know, between now and maybe even 50 years ago, you can just see the amount of green on the planet kind of shrinking and being replaced by kind of yellow, orangey colors. Um, if you look at any facts about um, deforestation, if you look at any facts about the amount of plastic in the ocean, um, it's pretty insane what we're doing to the planet. And what a lot of people are kind of just doing this, uh, just turning their heads and eyes away from it and not facing it. It's hard to see this in your day-to-day -day life. You know, everyone has their own problems. And that's the other thing I wanted to get onto, onto in this video. Everyone has their own shit to deal with. You know, I do, you do, everyone does. And you, you're probably thinking, why, why, should I, why should I take the time to focus on being sustainable, to you know, being green, whatever you want to call it, eco-friendly, when, you know, number one, I've got a million things to do. Number two, you know, I've got my own problems in my head. I've got my own problems externally. I haven't got enough money. I've got to make a living for myself. I haven't got time. And it is tough. It is tough um, to actually put in any kind of effort into this, this kind of thing. But I truly believe that it's something so important that we no longer can ignore it. And we literally just have to prioritize it. And there's always a way to prioritize things. You just have to reshift some of the things, some of your priorities. Now, this isn't gonna be a huge thing where you have to change your whole life. No way. I'm just starting with five very quick, simple tips here in this video on how you can be more sustainable um, in your day-to-day -day life. So, let's get into it. Quick and easy tip number one to leading a way more sustainable life is to reduce your plastic consumption. The oceans are pretty fucked right now because of the amount of plastic that we're putting into them. 900,000 kilograms every single hour. Uh, that, and that goes on every day, every week, every month, every year. That adds up to a ridiculous number and something very, very scary for all of us. So what we can do uh, as little old us is to reduce our plastic consumption. And there's a few key ways of doing this. I think some of the most important ways are, number one, not using any plastic bags. There's been a good movement about this so far, but I see a lot of people doing it. And I think, you know, even I sometimes do it, even though I'm trying to do it a lot less, I think it's something very, very easy that we can all do, is to not use plastic bags when you go out shopping. So anytime you buy anything, not just from the supermarket, but from any store, um, if they offer you a plastic bag, say no and have your own bags ready. So bring your own bags. We've all seen those kind of big uh, recycled kind of sturdy bags. Bring one of those, bring a backpack, bring anything and put the stuff straight in there. Tip number one, super easy. You can take your bag usage way down and reduce your footprint quite significantly by just doing that. Number two is actually saying no to straws. This depends on how much you go out for drinks, but if you're one of the, a very kind of social person who likes to go out, every time you have a drink and anything, even like an iced coffee, down to like cocktails, to anything, to Coke, if, you, if, if they hand you a straw every time you go out for a drink, maybe that's like you're using two, three straws a day, that could, you know, that adds up a ton. And there's been a lot of reports about how straws specifically, um, I think in areas like Bali and Indonesia specifically, are destroying uh, a lot of the marine life over there. So what you can do to reduce your straw usage is basically just saying no to straws. It's very easy. You just, when anyone gives you a straw, just deny it. And if, if they already put it in your drink, you can kind of make a point out of it and just take it out and say, sorry, I don't need this. And I know it can be one of those kind of friction things. It's a bit awkward to just say, by the way, I don't need this straw. They might look at you like, okay, 
But I think it's important because if everyone starts doing that, it makes it, it, it turns that into a movement rather than everyone kind of accepting the straws. Qué bonito, eh? No, ese no es bonito. Que... ¿Puedes hacer más bonito tú? ¿Tan no bonito como tu cara? No soy más bonito, pero puedo hacer café más bonito. ¿Cómo se dice straw? Pajita. Pajita. Paja, pajita. Vale, diferente. No te confundas. Vale, vale. <risa> un, un té helado y un paja. Gracias. <risa> ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es? <risa> pajita. Pajita, no quiero un pajita, gracias tío. Una pajita. Una pajita. This doesn't have a straw, but has some really awkward eyes. Like, how are you supposed to drink this, man? That's where a straw would help me out. But realistically, who needs a straw, eh? <laughs> and yes! What are you looking at? No, you're a special guest here to us, always. In my heart. Oh, thank you, and yes. I have a girlfriend, though. I don't care. I take care. Her name is Marie, no? <laughs> Big shout out to Hush Hush Cafe in Barcelona. Apparently, this straw yeah. is not actually plastic. No, it's made with maize. It's made of corn, somehow. So this is this biodegradable then? Yes. So I could have used this the whole time and avoided those awkward ice cubes. Anyway. Because, you know, I saw all these documentaries about turtles and stuff and they're stuck in their nose yeah, and everything. Yeah, it's terrific. Really now she's trying and to be the star of the documentary. Thank You're an inspiration. Thank you, thank you. Ah. I'm shy, I'm glad. The next thing is just to say no to excess plastic. There's tons of examples that I've been finding in my day-to-day -day life where I get offered, like, plastic when it's so unnecessary. Like, I'll go to a, I'll go to a market uh, right near my house and when I go, I say, I want, right, courgettes, peppers, chicken, whatever. And it, with each vegetable, they'll put each vegetable in a separate plastic bag. And so I've come home and I've got, you know, I've got my nice recycled bag, but inside it, it's got like 20 plastic bags that they've given me. So it's very easy. Like now I just go to the guy and say, sorry, don't, don't use the plastic ones. You can just put them all in here. Easier, easier for you, easier for me. He's like, oh, okay. And then it's perfect. You know, I come home with just one recycled bag, all my veg or food or whatever in that bag. And then you're good. You don't use any plastic when you go shopping. It's an exception when it's things like chicken, meat, fish. Obviously they have to put it in something. So I do accept like the bags that they give me with those ones. Um, but with anything that you really don't need it, don't use it. As you can see, did get one plastic bag from the salmon. Um, thing is with salmon, it's like, I'm not just gonna put it with all my vegetables, am I? Like I have to separate it somehow. I haven't really worked out a method to actually do that yet. So for now, got the salmon in the plastic bag. But saved a ton of plastic, just putting all the vegetables in here directly. Usually they give you like one plastic bag per vegetable, which is just ridiculous. So progress, not perfect, but we're getting there. I have actually seen people come with jars, like glass jars and say, put the fish in here. Don't see why that couldn't work as long as they're clean. I don't do that yet. Maybe it's something, another next step for me. Um, and the final thing is about bottled water. And that brings us on to our next step. Oh, hey. Water filters. You may be in a country, I know in England, it's, you know, you can pretty much just drink the tap water and it's fine. Some people have water filters to make it slightly more healthy or tasty or whatever. But in some countries, you just can't drink the tap water. Spain, you can drink the tap water. I'm in Barcelona right now. You can drink the tap water in Spain, but it tastes horrible and I'm not sure how healthy it is for you. I am very guilty for a long time. I was buying these big bottles of plastic water um, and I, you know, probably buy like three a week or something, you know, add that over a year. And like, if you saw all those bottles in one room, you feel pretty bad about yourself. You know, this is all of the plastic that I've just consumed just because I didn't have a water filter. So I got one of these very, um, very recently. I had one in my old flat for a long time. Uh, it didn't fit. I moved into this flat. It didn't fit on my new tap. So I had to get a different tap 
replace it, and then I could put this water filter on it. It's totally worth it. And um, yeah, you know, it's so much easier. I live on the fifth story, so like I have to climb up all of the stairs every day. And if I went and bought water, which I was doing for a while, I have to carry like two of these massive heavy bottles up all of the stairs. Now I don't have to even think about, oh, do I have water in the flat or not? No, I just use this filter, it's perfect. Tastes exactly the same as bottled water. I'm sure it's way more healthy than drinking the tap water. And it's, I think it's probably the way I've reduced my plastic consumption most now is just by using this. This brand is called Brita. Um, I don't know if it's the best on the market or if it's not, it's just the one that was available. I know there's a local company in Barcelona called Tap, T-A-P-P, -P, who look like a really cool small company. I think I would have gone with them if I'd known about them, but I only found out about, found out about them recently. Looks like their stuff's super high quality and uh, yeah, I don't know, I just prefer that. It's a more kind of local, nice feel rather than this. I think it's a multinational German company or something, I'm not sure. I almost forgot one other thing, this. Metal bottle. I got the one by Chili's, recommended by Joe Norman, my brother. He actually got it for me for Christmas. Shout out to Joe Norman. <laughs> I use this all the time. It's just, it's such, it's just the perfect combination. These two things, there's no, well, this actually is obviously made of plastic, but you know what I mean? It's gonna reduce the amount of plastic you use overall. What this is great at, is keeping water cool, or hot if you have a tea. Bam, fill it up. Imagine I just filled the whole thing up. Take it with you, put it in your backpack for the day. Not only do you have amazing, clean, drinking water, plastic free in the house, but you have it with you all day, every day. You know, get a bigger one of these if you want. I like this one, just fits in the side of my backpack. And I'm sorted. Like when I'm out, I don't have to, you know, ask for water in a, re in a restaurant. I don't have to, well, sometimes I do, to be honest. That's a lie. I don't have to, um, Say I'm in a cafe, I don't have to ask for water. I don't do that anymore because I have this. Say I am just walking around for the day and I'm you know, going on a trek or whatever. I don't have to buy a plastic bottle to go with me. I just use this. It's perfect. Cheers. Oh, it's just, just delicious. Air conditioning. It's not, it's not great. Air conditioning is not great for the environment. So minimize your use. Um, I, I use it sometimes, I'm going to be honest. What I like to do though is use it for maybe one hour just before I go to bed. So that will kind of cool the whole room down. I can sleep much better like that. But then once it goes off, you might be thinking, yeah, but then you just get hot again immediately. This is where my fan comes in. This is a tiny, tiny little fan that I bought uh, from Muji. I think Muji is the brand, it's a Japanese brand. And it's sick. You just turn it on, it goes from two different settings. I'm gonna plug it in for you here to show you. Boom. So, one setting here. You can probably hear that. Very gentle, nice setting. You can go to number two, which is way more intense. You can see that. And you can press it in and it will move around and it will change direction. So kind of keep your whole body fanned at night. It's perfect, it's literally perfect. I think it's actually meant to be like a desk fan. Like it's meant to be one of those fans that you put on your desk because it's a USB, but I just plug it into where my phone usually goes. And use it all night and it keeps me cool. Like it literally is perfect. Like I don't need any air conditioning at all. Even when it's like 30 degrees, 32 degrees outside. Yeah, like I almost never really use air conditioning. So it's, it's perfect. The next tip, which is tip number four, is about buying less, consuming less in general. Our consumption is one of the things that is most damaging to the world. Just by the fact that we love to consume. We love to buy new stuff. We might buy a new pair of shoes every month. We might buy new clothes all the time. We might buy the latest gadgets all the time that we don't really need. This overconsumption leads to tons of different things, tons of different ways. Um, of, damage, of damage to the planet from the encouragement of big business that has no environmental responsibility by buying all the products more than we need that they sell, down to the amount of waste that you actually throw away from those products that you no longer use. If you do buy 
new clothes all the time, how many of them, how many of your old ones are you constantly throwing away? Um, how many of the things that you buy get unused and then go into the trash? This is this practice, this constant kind of cycling through things, spending our own money on things that we don't need, then throwing those things away is a massive thing that contributes to the destruction of our planet. Um, so the, the basic advice here is just consume less, like don't buy as much stuff. Just really ask yourself before you're thinking about buying stuff, before that kind of need comes in, and I want that, is like, do I actually need that? Will this actually serve a practical benefit in my life? That's number one. Number two, this is gonna save you tons of money. Uh, if you, obviously, you don't buy as much stuff, your bank account, you're gonna start saving money, put yourself in a way better position in life in general. And the final thing is that I think it will actually free up some of your time uh, to, to start spending time in a more meaningful way with the people around you. So by not going out with your friends just to buy things or going out by yourself to buy stuff, replace that need, that desire of going to buy stuff with some things that can actually connect you with people. Maybe that is as simple as playing a game of cards with some friends. Um, something like that, or going, going for a walk with a friend, going into nature, going for a hike, doing some physical activity. All these things that can actually connect us with the people around us, as well as save us money, are all good things for ourselves and for the planet. Uh, and it's a very bad cycle to be in, both personally and for the environment, of just con constantly consuming things that you don't need to kind of fill some sort of hole that you or you know, blame it on the, the world and society has created within you. <sighs> all right, this brings us on to tip number five. We all have to buy some stuff, right? We all have to buy, you know, the occasional item of new clothing, food. Um, we, we all, you know, we live in this, we're not, we're not just gonna start hunting and gathering and, you know, becoming cavemen. We live in this society and I don't know about you, but I kind of enjoy the society we live in. And that involves buying stuff occasionally, spending money, earning money. And so, of course you sometimes have to buy stuff, but this is when tip number five comes in. It's choosing who you buy from and what you buy that can have a huge impact on the world, especially if a lot of people do this. This is gonna be another video topic. Um, that I'm really excited to talk about, which is how essentially what you buy and who you buy from can change the world, can change the whole society that we live in and make everything much more geared towards being environmentally friendly and connecting, reconnecting us with nature, rebalancing us with nature and having a lot more nature in the future for everyone to enjoy. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, kind of obviously a massively new direction. Let me know your thoughts, let me know the comments. I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this kind of content. Um, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. As always, if you want tips and tricks, as well as a whole list of gear that I use to film my videos, click on the link below. Uh, that'll also give you a bunch of tips and advice on filmmaking and how to make awesome travel videos, as always. And I will see you in the next video. All right, guys, bye-bye.